Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Tutorial Test Prep. Today we'll be going over skills insight number two, advanced math. This video will cover the advanced math section of the skills insight tool on College Board's website. The link to these questions will be in the description. I recommend you complete the questions before watching this video. Let's get started. Okay, so first we're looking at the 360 and lower band. Uh, so this is a combining like terms question. So what we're going to do is to combine like terms, uh, either the terms both or all of them have to be numbers, or they have to have the same kind of variables and exponents after the numbers. So I noticed these guys are like terms. And I notice these guys are like terms. So 9x plus 6x gives me 15x. And then 2y plus 3y gives me 5y. So I'm going to put plus 5y. And that gives us answer choice D. OK, this one wants to know the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is the point where the graph crosses the y-axis. So we're going to kind of mentally look at that y-axis with our mind's eye. And we see that the graph touches that y-axis right here with a y-coordinate of negative 5. So the x for a y-intercept is always 0. And the y is what we read off the axis, which is negative 5. So the coordinates are 0, comma, negative 5. And that is answer choice B. Um, I went over that a lot because you better believe they're going to put negative 5, comma, 0 as an answer choice. That would be flip-flopped. That would be an x-intercept. So be careful. Make sure for y-intercepts, for y-intercepts, you always have x is 0. And then for x-intercepts, you always have y equals 0. Great. Let's go on to the next band. <clears throat> OK, so for this one, it's, it's not super clear. But if you can look at the answer choices. They, they pretty much want you to pull out a common factor. So this is where having good number sense kind of really helps. Um, the greatest common factor of 12 and 27. Well, I know 12 doesn't go into 27. Let me try 4. 4 doesn't go into 27. OK, let me try 3 or 6. 6 doesn't go into 27. Let me try 3. Oh, 3 goes into 27 and 12. So that's probably the GCF. So the GCF of these two is 3. They don't have any letters in common. So the GCF is just 3. It's not like 3x or something, because the 27 doesn't have an x. So um, we're going to pull out a 3. And then when we pull out a times 3, that's kind of like dividing by 3. So. Um, this would give you 4x, 27 divided by 3 is 9. So 3 times 4x plus 9, which is answer choice C. Um, alternatively, you could have typed the original and then every single one of the answer choices into Desmos and see which one matches. I'm not going to go over that for this one, but... Um, I have another video about that if you want to check that out. OK. Um, let's look at the second question. OK, so this one wants the solution to the system. So the solution to a system is a point of intersection. So basically, where did the two or three or four, however many graphs you have, where, in this case, where did the two graphs cross? 
As you can see, that is right here. They both meet right at that point in the middle is where they touch. Um, let's say this graph came back around and then crossed that way. There would be another point of intersection there. So you can see sometimes the graphs cross each other and sometimes they just kind of bounce or touch one another. Uh, regardless, the point of intersection is that dot they gave you. The x coordinate is 2 and the y coordinate is 4. So that point is 2 comma 4, which is answer choice C. And I think that is correct. Um, you better believe on another question, they would put 4 comma 2 as an answer choice. So make sure you very carefully always put X in the first spot and Y in the second spot, alphabetical order. Great. Okay, now for the 420 to 460 band. Okay, so for this one, there's a little bit of um, kind of outside knowledge that you need to have. If you're going to do it by hand, we're going to go over how to do it on Desmos, but um, why don't we do that really quick? So um, the very first thing when you see an absolute value equation is you isolate the absolute value. Then once you isolate it, you have one of three cases. If the absolute value is equal to a negative, that can't happen. So the answer is just no solution. If the absolute value is equal to zero, you just drop the bars and you solve that equation. And if the absolute value is equal to a positive number, then you write two equations, one with you drop the bars and set it equal to the positive number, and then one where you drop the bars and you set it equal to the negative number, and you solve both of those and get both your answers. So please, please, please pause this video, jot, some, jot this little table down. It'll help you remember what you need to do. Great. Let's go back. Okay, so for this one, the absolute value is already by itself. And I see that the number on the other side is positive. Um, so that means it has two solutions. So we're going to write two equations. So x minus 2 equals 9. Or x minus 2 equals negative 9. So I add 2 to both sides for both of them, and I get x equals 11 and x equals negative 7. And both of those would have been acceptable answers. Now, I'm not sure how worth studying this is. I mean, you definitely want to know it, but you can also do this entire question just like any um, any um, equation entirely on Desmos. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So uh, I'm going to type in x minus 2 equals 9. And you see it's at negative 7 and 11. And um, if you didn't want to eyeball it, if you want to just read the graph, for these types of questions, for whatever reason, we have to do it the old-fashioned way. So I'm going to write y equals left-hand side. So y equals x minus 2. And then y equals right-hand side, 9. And you see there's two solutions. The x values are negative 7 and 11. On the actual test, this is absolutely what I would have done. I wouldn't have wasted any time writing down those equations, potentially making a mistake. Great. Let's look at the next one. Okay, f of 144. So all that means is to replace x with 144. So we're going to do 4 plus square root of 144. Uh, square root of 144 is 12. 4 plus 12 is 16. So f of 144 is 16. Um, and that is the answer. Um, just always make sure that you understand that if you had to change this guy to an ordered pair, it would be x is 144, comma, 16. So x and then y. And then if you see a different question where it's like f of x equals 8, what is x, right? 
you're not going to plug in x is 8, f of x is 8. So watch, I would write 8 equals 4 plus root x and then solve that equation. Um, so see how I replaced f of x with 8 instead of just replacing x with, with 8, like we did when we replaced x with 144. Um, hope that makes sense. Um, once again, it's important that you understand how to do that for harder questions, but you can do this one entirely on Desmos. So uh, f of x equals 4 plus square root of x. And I'm going to type in f of 144. And it tells me 16. So that is really helpful. You can evaluate any function. Um, just for the heck of it, why don't we do the question that I asked, which was, what is x when f of x equals 8? So let's type in f of x equals 8, and then click on the point of intersection. And x would be 16 when f of x is 8. Great, phenomenal. OK, let's get rid of this. Um, now we got to do the 470 to 540 band. OK, so if you don't know, all the area and volume formulas that you need, for the most part, are on the reference sheet, which is now, instead of at the beginning of the test, it's in like this, the top right corner, there's like a little button up in the top that says calculator. So just make sure you're using that throughout the test because there's some helpful stuff in there. Uh, anyway, the area of a rectangle is length times width. And it says that the area is this. Hopefully you can kind of see, wait a minute, the width is just the width. And if I rewrite this using the commutative property of multiplication, you can kind of see, oh, the width is w. They already told us that. And the l, the length, is w plus 29. So the length is w plus 29. And that is answer choice C. Great, very good. OK, for this one, table shows the exponential relationship. OK, so T is the time. And D is the amount in dollars. It says that here and here. OK. Um, honestly, probably the easiest way to do this is to just guess and check. If you plug in T equals 0, you should get 670, right? So let's see if that works. So um, point oh oh six one plus 670 to the zero. Okay, so that becomes one. One times 0.06 is 0 0.06. Okay, so looks like this guy is wrong. Six seventy times one plus point oh oh six to the zero. That is six seventy. Okay, he's still in the running. One plus point oh oh six to the zero, that's one, so he's out. Don't get 670. Point 
This one's also going to give us one, but just to show you how to type it in. Okay, that one gives us one. Okay, so none of those are right. We don't even need to check the other points. The only one that gives us this point is B, so it has to be B. Didn't have to do any, like, exponentials or anything like that. You just have to know when you have a multiple choice question like this, you can just guess and check the points. If, if they don't give you what you, you expect to get, it's probably not right. Great, and that one is B. Very good. All right, let's go to the next band. Okay, product. So um, x to the negative 6, y cubed, z to the 5. Product means multiplication, so times... x to the fourth, z to the fifth, plus y to the eight, z to the negative seven. Okay, so whenever you multiply two things with a like base, rules of exponents tells us to add the exponents. Also, we have to distribute. So watch, I'm gonna do this guy times the first term, which is this guy. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. So let me make that clear. So x to the negative 6 times x to the 4, negative 6 plus 4, negative 2. There's no y, so in the second one, so it's just y cubed. z to the 5th times z to the 6th, 5 plus 5 is 10. Okay, now we're going to do this one times the second one in the parentheses. Distribute, right? And I get plus x to the negative 6. y cubed times y to the 8, 3 plus 8 is 11. z to the 5th times z to the negative 7, 5 plus negative 7 is negative 2. Great, x to the negative 2, y cubed, z to the 10, x to the negative 6, y to 11, z to the negative. That looks like answer choice D. And that is right. There are ways to um, plug in values, and then guess and check using Desmos, but that'd probably take a really long time to do. Um, I think adding here, doing the adding and distribution wasn't so bad. So make sure you know your rules of exponents, and also make sure you know how to distribute. That shows up all the time on the test. So you do that guy, and then this guy, like that. It's like a, it's like a rainbow. Okay, great. X-intercept. Okay, remember we said before for an X-intercept, we set Y equal to zero. Y is the same thing as F of X. So I'm going to put zero equals X squared minus 18X minus 360. Okay, this is factoring with A equals one. One of the most common things on the test. you got to make sure you know how to do it. So I put little parentheses. I put X's in the front seat. And now this is kind of a pain. I have to think of two numbers that multiply to negative 360 and add to negative 18. I'm pretty sure it's negative 30 and positive 12. That might take some guess and checking on the calculator. Um, whatever works. Uh, I'm pretty sure that is right. So um, now we use the zero product property, set each of these guys equal to zero, each of these factors equal to zero, and we get x plus 12 equals zero, and we get x, add 30 to both sides, subtract 12 from both sides, and we get 30 and negative 12, and 30 is not an answer choice. So it must be negative 12, which is answer choice A. And that is right. Now you better believe we wouldn't be doing any of this on the actual tests because we can do this whole question on Desmos. So f of x equals x squared minus 18x minus 360. And you see there's two x-intercepts, negative 12, 
and 30. Probably would have took about 10 seconds to do that, okay? So anytime you see a question, what's the x-intercept? What's the y-intercept? You can just type it in and click on it. It's very fast. I have another video on that. You can go check that out. Great, I think that's it for that band. So let's go on to the 610 to 670. We're almost done. Okay, so to find the y-intercept, we could of course graph it or plug in x equals zero, but it's probably faster if you understand this. y equals a times b to the x. a is your initial value or your y-intercept and B is your growth slash decay factor when X goes up by one. In other words, it's the number your Y values get multiplied by when X goes up by one for this type of equation. It has to look exactly like that, A times B to the X. So you see how I'm thinking this because it looks exactly like that, right? A times B to the X, it looks exactly like that. Okay, so you can see our A or our Y intercept is 9,000. Okay, so right away, any answer choice that doesn't mention 9,000 is wrong. So A is wrong and C is wrong. So now you have to know what a y-intercept is. It's the y-value when x equals 0. So for this one, we have y equals 9,000 Uh, advertisements they send each year. I'll just put advertisements. I don't think the nitty gritty on that is super important. When X equals the number of years since 1997. So zero years since 1997. Well, guess what, guys? Zero years since 1997 would be 1997. No, no, no time has passed, right? So this is just 9,000 advertisements in 1997. And you see the only one with this interpretation is D. So in 1997, they sent 9,000 advertisements. So um, big red flag about answer choice B is it says the word minimum. Um, that would probably only be relevant if it were a quadratic question, which this is not. This is an exponential function. Quadratics, when you, when you look at the vertex, sometimes it tells you the minimum. Probably the only case on the SAT where they, one of the only cases where they would use the word minimum or maximum is on a quadratics question. So this is not a quadratics question. So if you knew that, you could have crossed up B right away and gotten D without doing very little work. But I wanted to go through how to interpret it literally. Because what if this was a point, right? What if, it, what if X were, instead of X being zero, X were 15? We would say 15 years since 1997. And we would go, okay, 1997 plus 15. Oh, that was in the year 2012. You see, so just just make sure you understand how to, you know, do the addition and subtraction on that whole years since business. Shows up quite a bit on the SAT. Great, let's look at this one. Ah, so this is a quadratics question. It says, for what value of x does f of x reach its minimum? So um, when you have factored form, with two, two factors in a quadratic, 
So in other words, y equals a x minus s x minus t. To find the vertex, you find h using s plus t divided by 2. You average the roots. OK, so for this one, we're going to find the roots. 0 equals x minus 14, x plus 19. And the two roots are, I'm just going to skip some stuff here. x equals 14, x equals negative 19. Now to find h, the x-coordinate of the vertex, we're going to do s plus t divided by 2. So 14 plus negative 19 divided by 2. I don't even know what that is. Great. It's negative 5 over 2. And it wants what value of x? h is the x value. So that is the answer. Wow. Now, um, just for the sake of it, just because I'm already, you know, on a roll here. Um, if you wanted to find k, you would plug this in, this x value in for x over here. So I'll do that right now. Um, negative 5 halves minus 14 negative 5 halves plus 19. And let's see what that is. Uh, negative 272.25, uh, which is some really big f fraction. So I'm, I'm not going to write that. But it, the vertex would be. negative 2.5, or negative 5 halves, negative 272.25. So just in case you ever have to, you get a symbolic question, like there are at the end of the second module usually, where you have to find a vertex by hand. Um, just make sure you know how to do this. Find h and then plug it in. That's it. OK, so this question can also be entirely done on Desmos. And I, I had a video about this. Um, so let's try it. So f of x equals x minus 14, x plus 19. OK, so the vertex, the, the minimum is at the vertex, right? So the vertex is this little hump. So I click on that, and it says negative 2.5, negative 272.25, and um, the Answers are not um, decimals. So I'm just going to go over here and be like, wait, OK, they want x, negative 2.5, negative 2.5. And then click on this button here. It'll change it to a fraction, negative 5 halves. Probably would have took you about 15 seconds. So please just make sure you do that. Um, you, when you're studying, you want to practice doing it by hand. But on the actual test, you want to go faster and make sure you're getting it right. right? So. Great. OK, one last band, 680 and higher. OK, is a very common question. Um, so uh, let me pull some notes up on the screen. I'm going to pause the recording. Give me a second to find them. OK, great. So um, these are my really informal notes on projectile quadratics. Um, so the y-intercept is the initial height, or the height at which the ball or thing was thrown or launched. For quadratics, the y-intercept is represented by the letter c in standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. The vertex, this is really important. The x-coordinate is the time it takes to reach the max height. And the y-coordinate is the max height. So don't mix those up. OK, it's really easy to mix them up. And the positive x-intercept is the time it takes to reach the ground. We don't care about the negative x-intercept. It's a word problem. We're not going backwards in time. 
So don't worry about that. Just worry about the positive one. It tells you the time it takes for the object to hit the ground. So please take a second, pause this video, probably jot this down in your notebook, um, all that stuff. And then remember, y-intercept is represented by the letter C when we're talking about quadratics. And then vertex is represented by H and K, as we were talking about before. Great. OK, so let's go back here. So um, it has an initial height of 10 feet above the ground. And it reaches its uh, maximum height eight seconds after being launched. OK, so they just told us two points. So they told us the y-intercept, initial height, that's y-intercept, right? And this one says max height. So it tells us, that tells us the vertex. So the y-intercept is 0, comma, 10. And the vertex, almost everyone would say 10, 3, 4, comma, 8. Remember, time is always x. Time is x. So it's really 8, comma, 1,034. So please, please, please don't mix that up. And remember, this is our vertex h and k. Um, this guy is c, but I'm not going to use that. Uh, OK. So. Whenever you're given the vertex, the way you want to find the equation is vertex form. So vertex form is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. You have to have that memorized. You got, you got to know standard form, factored form, and vertex form all by heart. OK, so we don't know what a is, but we know h is 8. So x minus 8 squared plus k, 1,034. We keep the sign of this one, and we change the sign of this one, because there's a minus. Great, so now we don't know a, but we can find a very easily by using this point, the point that they gave us, 0, comma 10. So that's what I'm going to do. 10 equals a times 0 minus 8 squared plus 1034. Uh, negative 8 squared, in parentheses, is 64. So I get 10 equals 64a plus 1034. And then, let's see, 10 minus 1034 divided by 64. I get a equals negative 16. Um, this has something to do So the equation, I'll go up here for the, the rest of this, is y equals negative 16 x minus 8 squared plus 1034. This is the negative 16. It's almost, it's, it's always going to be negative 16, a, for a quadratics problem. It has something to do with when you use the, the force due to gravity, when you use American units, when you use feet and seconds, it always comes out to negative 16. So if you want to just memorize that and save yourself some time, go ahead and do it. But I don't know, I wouldn't risk it just in case there's a problem where they're like, oh, you're kicking a ball on the moon or something, and it like comes out differently. So, um, Or if it's a different type of question altogether. Great. So we have our, we have our quadratic. And um, now what we're going to do is um, we want to know the height 10 seconds after being launched. So that's just telling you um, x equals 10. So we're going to plug in 10. So negative 16, 10 minus 8 squared plus 1034. And let's see what that comes out to. I'm getting 970 
feet, which should be correct. <clears throat> okay, so now it is super worth mentioning that this like entire, almost the entire question minus this part at the beginning where you change the words to points. Um, almost this entire thing can be solved on Desmos. So let's, let's go over it. So you might want to check my video on this. We're going to do what's called regression. So it's 0, 10, and then 8, 10, 34. Now we type in y1 tilde, and now you're going to just put any form of a quadratic that you want, probably standard form or vertex form. I'll just do standard form, just to mix things up. AX, AX squared, but notice I'm putting ones. BX1. Great, and... Um, Hmm, maybe we can't do this. Did I do something wrong? Maybe we can't do this entirely on Desmos. I could be wrong. Yeah, two points. Maybe two points isn't enough for it to be able to know kind of what's happening. Yeah, see, it, it's going to regress it upwards, but we want it to regress downwards. Yeah, you might, you might have to do at least some of this question by hand. And try again. Yeah, no dice, it gave me a different, uh, completely different curve. So yeah, you, you do have to do it on paper, at least this one. Great, this is really important to know. Let's do the last one. Okay, function f is defined by... In the xy plane, the graph of y equals f of x minus 12 has a y-intercept. Okay. So f of x minus 12 is just negative a to the x plus b minus 12. And it tells us it has a y-intercept of zero, negative 75 over seven. So I'm gonna plug those points in. Uh, see how this is, again, f of x minus 12. This one, and then this one. Okay, so we're gonna plug in negative 75 over seven equals negative a to the zero plus b minus 12. Okay, so we get negative 75 over seven. This is negative a to the zero is one. So that's one plus b minus 12. So this is negative 75 over seven equals b negative one minus 12 is negative 13. Now I'm gonna add 13. You can do this on Desmos or on your calculator. I'm just gonna do it on my calculator. And I get B equals 16 over seven. And now they said the product is 320 over seven. So AB equals 320 over seven. And I think we're trying to find A, yep. So 16 over seven. 
Great, and now we're gonna divide both sides by 16 over seven. And again, I'm just gonna do that on a calculator. So 320 over seven divided by 16 over seven. And I get A equals 20. And I think that is right. Awesome, so yeah, we just took this equation and we, again, we, we transformed it the way they wanted us to. And then we, nine times out of 10 guys, when they give you a point and an equation, you're gonna plug in the point. See how I plugged in the point and just went, let's just see what happens. And oh, it worked out that I had B by itself and I could solve it, right? No other letters in this equation, right? Great, I looked for a little bit there and I don't think there's a good way to do this on Desmos. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm sure you could do the work on there, but I don't think there's like a quick way to just do it all in one step. I don't, I don't think regression is very helpful. Okay, I think that was the last question. I think we did everything. We did all 14 of them. Okay, that completes the lesson. Please like and subscribe for more digital SAT math content. If you're interested in my tutoring services, the link to my website will be in the description. I tutor SAT math and all math subjects from about seventh grade to AP slash early college level. Thanks for stopping by and good luck studying.